some sports disciplines are in danger. There's talk of a 30% fall in judo. Sport is a real vector of integration for young people and adolescents. It was really difficult to start competing again, because obviously there was a crisis which was complicated. Hello and welcome to a new edition. I'm Nadia Shabi and this week you find us at the INSEP, the National Institute for Sports Expertise and Performance, as we put the focus on how France's sports world has handled the Covid curveball. What with two lockdowns and social distancing rules having upended most competitions, and forced the closure of many training facilities, it's been a rough year for athletes, clubs and sports fans alike. Faced with the dire financial consequences of this forced timeout, President Macron has met with representatives and come up with a game plan. On a normal Saturday, these courts, tracks and gyms are buzzing with life. But the hustle and bustle has given way to silence. Some sports disciplines are in danger. There's talk of a 30% fall in judo. Members are afraid. This Paris University club isn't alone. Amateur sports clubs across France lost 4.5 million members at the start of the school year. And this figure could worsen with a second lockdown. It's a loss of financial resources to run the club as 85% of our activity is based on membership fees. On top of that, it's a loss of social ties for all the people who come to play. Next door, though, the noise of a volleyball game pierces the silence. Contrary to last spring's lockdown, professionals are allowed to continue practicing, if only behind closed doors. It's a big financial blow for clubs. There are no tickets sold, there are no sponsors. We project a loss of 500,000 euros on average per club. To relieve both amateur and professional sports, Emmanuel Macron has promised a bailout package of nearly 400 million euros. 100 million to clubs to compensate for the loss of ticket sales, 20 million to federations for the fall in memberships, 15 million to sports organisations as an emergency fund for next year. Gyms, with their turnover in freefall, will also receive extra aid. Outside of lockdown, we get about 600 or 700 people a day. So that's quite a lot of people, and today it's weird to see no one. But we're adapting to the situation, and we hope that it will get better soon. Like in many other gyms, coaches have turned to giving online lessons to try and keep their subscribers. Gyms and clubs will likely have to remain closed until at least the end of the year, though children will be allowed to take up their sports activities again in December. Sport is a real vector of integration for young people and adolescents. It allows them to develop strong values like discipline and how to push oneself. We see a lot of young people who drop out of school because they've lost their way without the habits and frame of reference they had on a daily basis with sport. The French president has also earmarked 100 million euros to help young people and people with disabilities join sports clubs in 2021. Well, beyond the financial effects, this health crisis is of course taking its toll on the athletes themselves. Its impact, both physical and mental, is being closely monitored by specialists here at the INSEP and in clubs around the country. The ball is now in their court to help French competitors play the long game and eventually come out on top. On vous laisse 30 minutes pile d'échauffement. Hey, bien. À 17h05, premier match. These wrestlers on the French national team may be at practice, but they're training as if it were a real competition. Every Friday we fight and we fight and we keep on fighting. It allows us to improve and evolve. It motivates us to stay competitive. It's nice. It helps clear my mind. It's exhausting, but I really enjoy it, given the complicated times we live in. Most competitions have been cancelled due to the pandemic, so trainers have found new ways to keep athletes in shape and maintain morale. 
Oftentimes, they recreate tournaments. We try to imitate the conditions of real-life international competitions as much as possible. That's what we're missing right now, so that's what we need to work and progress on. Cancelled competitions, however, are not the team's only worry. <laughs> We've had people test positive for coronavirus. They have to start isolating straight away for seven days. Those in contact with them have to isolate as well, so they go home. French sports officials say frequent COVID testing is one reason why anxiety has become more prevalent among professional athletes. Waiting for test results can be anxiety-inducing. They have no control over the results that will determine whether or not they can compete. For other sports, however, it's full steam ahead when it comes to matches. Since resuming this summer, football teams have been playing two to three games a week to make up for missed time from the spring when the season was suspended. During the first lockdown, our players fell out of shape. Their performance declined in cardio and locomotion exercises. So resuming play was difficult. We've had more injuries than usual. This player was one of those injured. In addition to being on the roster of Paris FC, the top football club in France's second division, he also plays for Madagascar's national team. I got injured during a qualifying match in Ivory Coast. I sprained the ligaments in my knee. It's a lot to take on. The intensity of games, the intensity of travel, it's a lot. All this fatigue builds up and you get injured easier. This football player is not alone. Around the world, stars such as Kylian Mbappe and Cristiano Ronaldo have also been injured since play resumed. Well, joining us now to share her take on the situation is judo champion Clarisse Agbenyonou, who's just returned from Prague with her fifth European title in the women's half middleweight category. Clarissa Agbenyounou, hello. Hello. Thank you very much for having us here and congratulations on your win. Thank you very much. How did it feel returning to the competition within this ongoing crisis? It was really difficult to start competing again because obviously there was a crisis which was complicated, unprecedented, incredible really, that nobody would have ever imagined. And there was a whole system in place for participating in competitions, tests to do a week beforehand, and when we got there we were quarantined while waiting for the results. So going to competitions with all these things to bear in mind was very complicated. And you won the final in just 23 seconds, but you've also said that you secured the title despite not being on peak form. Has this crisis perhaps made mental prep and resilience more important than it was before? Yes, I think so, because when I returned from competitions, people asked me if I was physically on form, and I was, but I was mentally exhausted. Exhausted because we're not used to all of this. Even on an emotional level, I had the impression we couldn't really express ourselves. We couldn't get excited about seeing each other again. We couldn't hug each other. We couldn't do any of that. And even when I won, we couldn't shake each other's hands or say thank you. It was very difficult psychologically. Now, do you think that that also means that all bets are off for the future of rankings? Does it mean that uh, the, the participants are now not sure of who they're going to have in front of them and not sure of how they'll be able to perform? Does it change everything? Yes, I think it changes a lot of things because we have a ranking list which is pretty precise and now we don't know if countries are going to go into lockdown, if some people can't compete or if, even worse, certain people arrive and test positive and can't compete either. And that's already happened, we've seen it. As well as all of that, in my category, for example, I was certain I'd be facing Tina Tristan Yak. Obviously, she was the rival I was expecting. She's one of the best and she told me she got stressed and that's why she lost. That wouldn't have happened a year ago. Now, some athletes, especially in contact sports like yours, have chosen to sit out the season rather than risk catching the virus. Do you understand that decision? Is it a hard decision to take? 
Yes, it's a difficult decision, but an understandable one. And it was obviously something I had to think about too, not because I was scared of the virus, but of the competition being cancelled, being disappointed, preparing and not being able to fight, scared of testing positive and not being able to go. I wasn't scared of getting ill, but about testing positive and having to quarantine over there. There are so many things to consider now that we're more nervous than before. Also, our sport has weight categories, so we have weigh-ins to be able to compete. Then you've got to be on form, physically and mentally prepared, and on top of all of that, there's COVID tests. You've got to be careful. It's a strange atmosphere. Now, in 2016, you won silver in the Rio Olympics, and you've been set to take part in the 2020 Games in Japan. Those are now obviously in limbo. How do you handle such uncertainty? I was devastated by that silver medal in Rio. It's difficult to say. I was telling myself, come on, just a few more months until I can fight for what I'm missing. And I was so ready. I told myself, no matter what, I'm going to get it. I will win this gold medal. So then I thought, this is rubbish because I have to do all the work all over again. I was ready and now I'm unsure. I can't say I'm going to win with the same conviction that I had before. I mean, how am I going to come out of all of this and find a way to motivate myself again and tell myself, come on, Clarisse, you've got to do this. Knowing that this sport is difficult, that you've got to get back to your peak, you've got to make sacrifices and be selfish again. Sometimes my family asks me to eat with them and I can't. There's a competition and I have to concentrate. It's hard. And are you concerned that this crisis might be a lasting setback for certain sports and clubs, especially where women are concerned? Of course, a big impact, especially on judo. We know that most of the money comes from memberships, but obviously that's not possible at the moment. You can't tell your child to sign up to judo classes when it's not possible to practice the sports because things are complicated at the moment. And we already know that fewer girls are doing sport and that women's sport gets less recognition. I thought it was already very, very complicated to show that as women we are consistent, that we're fighters, and now I'm thinking we have yet another thing to prove, that despite everything going on, we're still working, trying to show that we're working with the resources that we have. So we would like everyone to support us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that's why we're leaving this edition. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned and stay safe. You have enjoyed your program with Air France Protect, promising you a pleasant trip with total peace of mind.